Today, we'll be creating a standard solution, and today the standard solution will be iron to ammonium sulfate, which is a common uh, primary standard for redox titrations. In order to make a standard solution, we have to measure up the solid from scratch. In our case, in this uh, experiment, we're using a 100 milliliter volumetric flask, ready to go. And um, our primary standard here has been calculated using mole calculations based on the concentration that we want to have uh, in this flask. Our calculated mass today will be 1.00 grams, and we'll have to weigh that out on the scale. In order to do that, we'll need our weighing boat and our solid and our scoopula with a waste container. We'll turn on our scale, and we'll allow the scale to get ready to record mass. Once it is ready to record mass, we are going to tear the scale, or zero the scale, in order for it to record only the mass of the solid and not the mass of the weigh boat. So the weigh boat here has a mass of 2.18 grams, and we'll hit zero or tear, and that zeroes the scale, now we can add our solid. We never want to pour solid on the scale because if we miss, the solid chemical could damage the scale. So instead, we take the weigh boat off of the scale, and using the scoopula, we pour out some of the solid into the weigh boat, and put the weigh boat back on the scale in order to test the mass. In this case, we're under mass, so we need to repeat the procedure to get closer to 1.00. Very close now. We're going to only add a tiny little bit, hoping to not have any excess. If we do get excess solid, we cannot put it back into the container, and we must put it into our waste container. While this may take some time, you end up with a very accurate mass, such as 1.00, and we don't have any waste. So we can now put our scoopula in our waste container, put off to the side, close our stock container, and get ready to prepare the solution. Now, in order to prepare the solution, I cannot take the solid and pour it into the neck of the volumetric flask. The volumetric flask's neck is far too narrow, and the solid could get stuck inside, not allowing it to dissolve properly. Instead, we will mix the solid into a small beaker and transfer that mixture into the volumetric flask, at which point we will fill up the flask to the volume that we need. We have a small beaker, and our solid will go into that small beaker, using a small amount of distilled water. Now if I pour the solid into the beaker, not all of it makes it into the beaker. As we can see, there is some solid left in that weigh boat. What we need to do is use our distilled water and do a rinse of the weigh boat into the beaker, being careful not to splash or miss any of our solid from our Weigh boat. Once that is finished, our weigh boat is clean and all of the solid is now into that small transfer beaker. We can stir that using the rubber policeman. We can add a little bit more water to help the dissolving process. The key is not to add too much water because our volumetric flask is 100 milliliters. A general rule of thumb is to do 15 to 20 percent of the volume of the flask as the initial dissolved amount. So 20 mils is a good start, and we will stir a little bit to try and dissolve the solid. Our solid might not completely dissolve, and we will end up doing several rinses of this container as it gets poured into the volumetric flask. Once we are ready to pour, we are going to take the lid off the volumetric flask and place a funnel into the flask to help pour past the neck. When we pour, 
If I just poured the beaker straight into the funnel, I could splash or spill. So instead, we will use the rubber policeman as a guide using the properties of water and adhesion. So we touch the beaker to the rubber policeman and pour slowly, getting all of the liquid touching the rubber policeman and adhesion pulling it down into the funnel. I then need to do several rinses because I didn't dissolve all of the solid with the first volume. Once I can no longer see any solid, I will do three clear rinses to get any remaining molecules that I couldn't see with the naked eye. For each of these subsequent rinses, we use very small amounts of water because we don't want to overfill our volumetric flask, which would then force us to redo the solution preparation. I still have a little bit of solid that I can see at the bottom. <clears throat> so as we stir this up and do a pour, that will be the last of my solid that I could see with the naked eye. I now will do three clear rinses in order to catch the smallest particles. And every time I rinse, I'm rinsing both the stir rod and the funnel as well as the beaker. Getting all the sides of the beaker. Our last clear rinse. The beaker, the funnel, and the stir rod are all now clear. We can place a piece of paper towel down in order to stop the little drips from the bottom of the funnel as this is now a clean funnel. And what we can see here with the volumetric flask is that it is not close to full. There is a line on the volumetric flask which is the calibrated volume of that flask. And that is the line that we must fill the water level to in order to get exactly 100.0 milliliters. In order to do that, we will use distilled water bottle. And at the last stages, if we need to, an eyedropper in order to get the meniscus to the line. One risk of filling is as soon as the liquid starts to enter the neck, the neck being very narrow, the level of fluid will rise very quickly compared to the level in the bottom part of the flask. So as I squeeze with a constant rate here, observe the change in the filling of the flask as soon as it enters the neck. And once it enters the neck, it fills very quickly. And we must take care not to overfill. At this point it's very important to bring your eye to the level of that line and you will try to see the line on the front of the neck and the back of the neck as one single line. If you can see both the front and back line we call this parallax which means your eyes are not exactly level with the line and you cannot actually see the meniscus in the flask. And we can see the front line is right where the bubble of the water is, but the back line is still very visible. This shows parallax. And as we bring the camera lower, or we bring the flask higher, and we approach the two lines until they are one line, we can see that the level of fluid is below the line. Even though the top seems to be at the line, the bottom of the bubble is not at the line which shows us we are not yet at exactly 100 milliliters. Using an eyedropper or a wash bottle, we top up the fluid to the line. We see the bottom of the bubble just touches the line, which shows us we're at exactly 100 milliliters. At this point, the only thing remaining is to finish stirring this solution. And to do that, we place the cap back on the volumetric flask. And instead of shaking, which actually does not stir properly because the air bubble at the top doesn't fully move, 
we hold the top and the bottom of the flask with our hands and we invert it. As we invert it, the air bubble physically moves from the bottom to the top of the flask, acting like a stir rod. So by inverting it roughly seven times, we are successfully stirring the entire solution in the flask. Going more than seven times is never a problem, but seven times is sort of an acceptable number of inversions to stir.